Jim. Huh? Huh? Is it not on? Well, what happened to it? I didn't cut it off. I just have to holler if it don't work. Yeah. Hello. No well, I just holler. How about that? It ain't working. I'm wear it up here now. Good morning. morning. Y'all glad to be here? Yeah. Me too. I'm glad to be here. Amen. We all are. <laughs> it does, don't it? I tell you, it's, when you miss a day, it plays on you. It works on you. I need it. I need it. Well, I'm not being my t-shirt before we get through here. <clears throat> Amen. You know, that's what I was thinking on the way down here. Boy, we got a lot of rain, but think of all that was snow and ice. You know, death told me be a lot more, I guarantee you. You know, we suffer through a lot of things in this day and time. I mean, the weather. Times has changed. Times has changed. God is still God. He's still a righteous God. He's still our judge. He's still a merciful God. You know, one thing about it, that if we're praying to God, and He hears our prayers, He'll look over us. I had a fellow ask me yesterday at the funeral, he said, you prayed up? I said, I like to think I'm prayed up. And then he said, man, I need you to pray for my back. And boy, the Lord whooped me. Man, he whooped me because I ain't prayed up. I ain't prayed up like I ought to be. I was telling Sister Nita this morning that I'd been reading about Solomon when they built the temple, you know, he got down on his knees in front of the congregation and lifted up his hands and he prayed to God. He prayed to God, if my people sin and they come back, Lord will have mercy on them. If my people trespass, you know, and it goes on and on and on, if the strangers would come in and pray to thee in this house, that thou will hear, O Lord. He didn't sit there quietly and pray in his spirit. God can hear that too. But as I was reading and I was thinking, Satan, when we're praying in our spirit, he doesn't hear our prayer. So we leave ourselves vulnerable. If we can't speak outward, if we can't pray to God aloud with our voice, the Bible says, with our voice we pray to Him. Y'all turn in your Bibles to the book of Psalms 141. Now I got to pray something. Come on. When you pray and you ask God to protect and you feel this warmth around you, that's God protecting you. Right. He's hearing your prayers. He's listening to you. So to be prayed up in bad weather, good weather, or anything else, there's a feeling you get when you pray that God is there with you. That's right. And I hate to know that I'm of this world and I pray out loud to God and He don't hear me because I don't feel what I feel. They don't feel what I feel when I pray. Right. That's right. And you know, how does the devil know? How does the devil know that you're protected unless you tell him, devil, get out of my life. Devil. Lord, the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. I can't tell you that I got a problem with you by not opening my mouth. Satan's the same way. He don't know that you got a problem with him unless you open his mouth. That's why he's always inching into our lives. Because we pray silent. We need to be praying vocally. In our closets. 
in our beds, wherever it is that we pray, we need to be praying so that He can hear. So that He can hear and He can know that you are a child of the Most High God. Psalms 141, starting in verse 1, says, Lord, I cry unto Thee. Lord, I cry unto Thee. Make haste unto me. Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto Thee. Make haste, Lord. Give ear unto my voice. He give us a mouth to speak. The power of life and death is where? It's in the tongue. You speak life. You speak death. You can speak healing. You can speak mercy. You can speak grace. And you can speak protection on your life. But it's through the mouth. We got to start praying aloud. Don't worry about what them other folks over there think about you. God hears. God hears you. And he will protect you. Verse 2 says, Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Boy, that's, that's a hard thing to do. You know what? Lifting up our hands. That is a hard thing to do. Unless we watch an Alabama football game. That's a hard thing to do. Lift up our hands. That's significant. That is very significant. Why is it so hard for us to do? Because it's sacrifice. It's your flesh that wants to keep your hands down. It's your flesh that wants to keep your mouth bound. It's your flesh that don't want you to speak out in the open in a public place. It's your flesh. Lifting up your hands. Well, I'm afraid somebody see me. They thought they was with me over at the Baptist church where they didn't do that and they frowned on it. I don't care. Amen. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Because if you want, who will? It's a sacrifice of praise. It's a sacrifice of praise. You want to be heard? What do you got to do in class? You got to raise your hand. You want your prayers to be heard? You got to raise your hands. Raise your hands. 1 Timothy 2 and 8 says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath or doubting. I would that men would pray everywhere. Not in the church, not in the closet. He said everywhere. Set the example. Set an example for the world to see. I would that men would pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath or doubting. Why do we have so much doubt? I don't care what nobody thinks of me, but God, He's my judge. He's the one I'm going to have to answer to. Lift up your hands and don't be ashamed. Hebrews 13 and 15 says, By Him, by Jesus Christ, therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to His names. Thank you Lord Jesus for the rain. Thank you Lord. It's almost January and it's 79 degrees outside. Praise you Lord. I got fig trees budding at the house in winter time. He's getting ready to come back. Amen. He's getting ready to come back and take this church out of here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise His holy name. Cry out to Him. 1 Peter 2 and 5 says, Ye also as lively stones are built up in a spiritual house, an holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Spiritual sacrifices. How do you get to the point to where you can raise your hands freely and praise His name? It's through the Spirit of God that dwells in you. It's the Spirit that dwells within us. See, in order to be filled with that Spirit, we got to exercise that Spirit. You get on TV on Saturday morning, what do you see? Them women out there... Whoo, whoo. They exercise it. Exercise your spirit. Get on your knees. Boy, that's some good exercise. Up, up, down, up. That's good exercise. Praise God. Do something. Do something. It's spiritual exercise in the Word of God. 
praising his name. Praising his name. I got a crick in my neck and it's done being healed. Thank God for, for spiritual exercise. I feel better already. But get down on your knees. Lift up your hands. Thank God for what he's done in your life. If you're sick, thank God you ain't dead. If you're hurting, thank God that it ain't worse than what it is. That's a running thing at work. You know, you said somebody smashes their finger and they're, oh, it hurts. You go up there and hit them in the knee with a hammer. Ah, oh, the finger feels better though, don't it? <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. Pray out loud. We got problems? Let them be heard. Let them be heard. Verse 3 says, Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. You hear me? Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Incline not my heart to any evil thing, to practice wicked works with men that work iniquity. And let me not eat of their dainties. He said, Incline not my heart to any evil thing. Lord, keep my lips. Keep my mouth from speaking God. Lord, keep my mouth from speaking evil. Lord, keep me from not partaking of any evil thing. Lord, don't even let me eat the evil bread or the wicked bread. Proverbs 3, 23 and 6 says, Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meat. Don't go seeking after other meats, other things offered to idols. Seek God. Jesus Christ said, I am the bread of life. He's that bread. He's that bread. Don't be searching any, seeking any other kind of bread. Seek God's word, the bread of life. Ask God to hold your mouth, to stay your lips. If we fill ourselves with the word of God, that's all that's going to come out. If we let the spirit of God dwell in us, it's got to come out. It's got to come out. Verse 5 says, Let the righteous, let the righteous smite me. It shall be as kindness. And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. He said, Let the righteous smite me. Let the kindness, it shall be a kindness. And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil. When I've done wrong. Lord, rebuke me. It will be like oil on my head. Kindness, let the righteous smite me. Proverbs 9, 9 and 10 says, Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. When I've done wrong, I want God to chastise me. I want him to smite me. I want him to scourge me because it's like ointment on my head. It's like ointment on my head that I know I've done wrong because if I'm doing wrong and God ain't showing me my wrong, then I may not be his. If I've sinned and I don't know that I've sinned, it may be because that I'm not his. I want him to smite me. I want him to scourge me and chastise me. Hebrews 12, 5 and 7. Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? He chastens us through his word. He's chasing me by saying, Boy, you ain't prayed up. When's the last time you got down on your knees and you raised your hands to me? When's the last time you humbled yourself before mankind and raised your hands to me, he said, the Almighty, and humbled yourself? Why aren't people getting healed? Greater powers than these, Jesus said, that we would have. Why ain't nothing happening? It's because we don't humble ourselves. We keep our prayers to ourselves. 
Oh, Steve had always said they don't make it past the ceiling because their heart's not in it. Our heart's not in it. We pray for selfish things. <clears throat> Do we pray for each other? Do we see what's going on around us and see the evil in the world? And do we pray for our enemies? If we're not praying out loud for our enemies, Satan's just running with it. He's running with it. He's stacking the enemies up at your door. Why? Because I'm not rebuking them at the door. They're coming in the house. Why? Because I haven't cleansed my house. We are lively stones. We just read that first Peter. Built up into a spiritual house. Into a spiritual house. We ought to offer sacrifice of praise. Praying openly. Praying vocally. Praying globally. For the world around us. Because God is long-suffering. There's people out there that are going to be saved. I was telling the brother the other day, he said, people ain't getting saved. People ain't, you can preach the word, but they won't hear. I just pray for one that would move in a congregation of a thousand. Of a thousand. Verse 6, back in Psalms 114, or 141, excuse me. When their judges are overthrown in stony places, they shall hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the grave's mouth as one, when one cutteth and cleaveth wood upon the earth. But mine eyes are unto thee, O God, the Lord, in thee is my trust. Leave not my soul destitute. Keep me from the snares which they have laid for me and the gins of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall in their own nets whilst that I with all escape. Let the wicked fall in their own nets lest that I with all will escape. Let the wicked fall in their own net. Our job is to pray for our enemies. Pray for those that despitefully use us. Pray for one another. Pray for deliverance. Pray for mercy. Just pray to talk to God and ask Him what it is that He'd have you to do. 142 verse 1 <coughs> says, Again, I cried unto the Lord with my voice there it is again with my voice with my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication he says I poured out my complaint before him I showed before him my trouble I showed before him my trouble how did he show his trouble before God He got down on his knees. And he presented himself to God. He raised his hands. He said, God, I'm before you now. I'm full of trouble. My enemies can pass me on every side. Lord, what is it that you'd have me to do? Lord, I pray for them that thou will snare them in their own net. And that they would repent. That's our job, is that people would be saved, no matter how bad you despise them. That's our job, to pray for them. I would that our enemy would fall in their own net, and when there's none there to help, they have no other choice but to cry out to you, Lord. When through their haughtiness and pride, they keep on attacking me, but yet I stand on the Word of God. And as long as I stand on the Word of God, the enemy will fall at my feet. And when they fall, Lord, I pray that they lift up their hands to you. Lord, and I pray that you would put me there to be able to help and lift them up and show them the way of the cross. That's what I want to pray. I want to pray that people would be saved. I want to pray protection upon my house, protection upon my loved ones. Lord, that you'd keep us in a time of trouble and draw us away for your mercy. 
verse 3, 142 says, When my spirit was overwhelmed within me. You ever been overwhelmed? Has your spirit ever been overwhelmed? I've been overwhelmed with troubles that I've caused on myself. I've been overwhelmed with, with thank decisions that I've made. But my spirit, my spirit, has your spirit ever been overwhelmed? Has God ever just shown you that you're not walking according to my statutes? The reason that things aren't going your way, the reason you're in the trouble you're in is because you won't stop and humble yourself. You won't give me the time of day. So keep on going your way and see where it gets you. His words, if we stay in His word, He'll catch us. He'll catch us as we're falling. He'll catch us because at some point, you know that feeling you get when your feet come out from under you and that second before you hit the ground, he's right there. Because it's in that second, if you're constantly in his word and you're constantly praying, he's going to catch you before you fall. And if for some reason he don't, he's going to be there to lift you up once you realize what you've done. But you've got to cry out to him. We got to cry out to him. Lord, Lord, don't wait till he puts you on your face to call unto him. It ought to be a daily thing. In the mornings, in the evenings. The Bible says continually, continually. But when you're in your secret place, when you're in your home, what's holding you back from getting on your knees and holding you back from raising your hand? What's holding you back from crying out to God? I don't want to wake the kids up. If I wake the kids up praying, praise God. I'm going to wake them up. If I'm waking my neighbors up, praise God, they need to be woke up. We all need to be woke up. We all need to be woke up. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knowest my path. In the way, in, way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me. I look. You see what he's saying? He said, when well, my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knowest my path. And he said, in, my path, in the way wherein I walked, they have privily laid a snare for me. God knows if there's a snare before you. If you're weary within your spirit, God knows. And he's gone before you. The Bible says this is the way. Walk ye in it. He's gone before you. I looked on my right hand and behold, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee. There is a guy. I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry. For I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison that I might praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Bring my soul out of prison. That's the problem we got today. We imprison our souls. We imprison our souls by the things that we allow into our life. By the things and the decisions that we make. We imprison our soul. The world is compassed around us. Do we truly know what it is to be free in the Lord? To be free to express our faith in a world that hates your Jesus? Do we truly know what that is? Do we, have we ever truly experienced the grace of God? We see grace when we see grace. God has sent a check in this month to pay this bill. Thank God. And that's as far as we get. God has continued to put bread and food on your table for as long as you've lived. Thank you, Lord. And that's it. Praise you, Jesus, Father. Praise the Lord. Every day, continually, because you don't know when that bread's going to cease. You don't know when that meal's going to stop. You don't know when the money's going to quit rolling in and you don't know when you're going to draw your last breath. So praise Him while you have time. Offer the gift of the sacrifices of praise. The Bible tells us the sacrifices of praise. Refuge, I would that men would lift holy hands everywhere. 
without wrath or doubting. Doubting, doubt is our biggest enemy. Him and the devil. The devil creates doubt. Doubt in our lives. Doubt that God can deliver you out of any problem, any obstacle that's before you. Why do we have problems? It's because we make bad decisions. Amen. That's all there is to it. We make bad decisions. But if we'd focus our time in prayer to God, Lord, don't let me make any more bad decisions. Father, I pray you guide my thoughts, guide my lips, guide my tongue, guide my heart. And then be still and wait for him to give you an answer. The Bible said, be still and know that I am God. He said, be still and know. We want answers right now. Sometimes they come in time. But with patience, but with patience, we wait for it. What does Romans tell us? For, by, for ye are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not yet hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But with patience. But with patience, we wait for that hope. We wait for that prayer. We wait for that answer. We don't go on trying to make ourselves, make it our own way. We wait for God. And that's what we do. God will answer your prayers. Bring my soul out of prison that I might praise thy name. I don't know how long the sentence is, but I guarantee you, he'll bring your soul out of prison. But we got to start seeking him. We got to start praying to him. What did Paul do when he was in prison? He prayed to God. He prayed and his chains were bent. He was broke free. And the prison door was open. And he was free. What was he doing? He was praying. He was rejoicing in the Lord. Same thing with our lives today. See, Satan's got us all tricked. He's got us all locked in a prison having a party. Having a prison party. The whole world's having a prison party because they're all under the bondage of Satan. He's the God of this world. He's got everybody fooled. We need to get out of this world. We need to figure out what it is to truly follow and seek God. Truly humble ourselves before God and praise His name. Psalms 143. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me. And in thy righteousness. He's saying, Lord, give ear to my prayer. In thy faithfulness. Lord, answer me, please. Answer me, Lord. Ask God to show you what it's going to take. What's it going to take, Lord? Show me, Lord, what it's going to take for me to give you my all. What's it going to take for me to truly submit to your word? What's it going to take for me to live like you would have me to live? What's it going to take... For me to get out of this ditch. Father, and get up on the mountaintop. What's it going to take, Lord, for me to keep that? Seeking. Keep seeking. No matter the circumstances. Keep seeking, Lord. What's it going to take? Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear unto my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me and in thy righteousness. And enter not into judgment with thy servant. For in thy sight shall no man living be justified for in the sight of almighty God no man living shall be justified Romans 3 and 20 says therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight for by the law is the knowledge of sin for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God Romans 3 and 23 says for the law we know sin and in the sight of God, no man is justified. But in Galatians 2.16 tells us, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith, but by faith of Jesus Christ. By faith of Jesus Christ. What is faith? What is faith? You ought to know that scripture. What is faith? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By faith in Jesus Christ, we are saved by hope. Hope. Hope, we hope in everlasting life. We're saved by, faith, saved by hope through faith. 
Through faith, that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. But through the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. So your faith ain't your faith. Your faith is Christ's faith. He came and He died for you that you could have faith in Him. And not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. No flesh shall be justified. Verse 3 in Psalms 143 says, For the enemy hath persecuted my soul. There that old devil is again. <laughs> the enemy hath persecuted my soul. He has smitten my life down to the ground. He hath made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. The enemy is Satan. The devil. Oh, Lucifer himself. The enlightened one. Oh, today, this is the year of enlightenment in the new world, in the new world today. 2015 was the year of enlightenment, the year of Lucifer. He's the God of this world. Oh, Lucifer is. The Bible tells us, Jesus said in John 10 and 10, The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, I come that they may have life and they might have it more abundantly. The thief cometh but to steal, kill, and destroy. What are you going to do about it? You going to let him in your house? He's coming in to take you over. He's coming in to take your children. He's coming in to take your marriage. He's coming in to take everything that you've got. And you stand in the way of keeping him out. You can stand at the door and rebuke that devil in the name of Jesus. But he's got to hear you. He's got to hear you. You want to show that you serve God? Let the world know. Let the world, let Satan hear it with your voice too. Because I guarantee you, if I tell you I'm coming to whoop you, you might not be so scared. But if I tell you I'm coming to whoop you with an army, you might have second thoughts about entering my house. That's the God that we serve. If you're standing with the army of God and you let Satan know it, you cannot lose. You're still going to have to fight. But you know what? You ain't even got to get off your knees. You don't even have to get off your knees. Just get on your knees and pray to God. Because Satan has tore families apart. Satan has deceived our families. Satan has deceived our children. Satan has deceived us. But until we humble ourselves and ask God to show us the way, show us the way, Lord, that we should go. Because our minds have been clouded. We've been deceived all through life. Lord, show us the way and help us to walk in it. Lord, your Bible says resist the devil and he will flee. Resist him out loud. Resist him out loud. And he will flee. Don't let him have power over your children. Don't let him have power over your life. Don't let him in your house. You can control those things. You know that? Because you're a child of God. Because you're a child of God. The only thing that stands in the way of defeating him is you. It's the decisions that we make by not doing anything. When we lay down at night, we say a simple little prayer. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for all you've done. Lord, watch after my children. I get anybody fired up? But I guarantee you, if you stop before you throw that leg up on the bed and let them knees hit the floor and you start praying out loud, the things that will come out of you, you won't believe because you can hear it with your own mouth and God hears it in heaven and He'll answer your prayers and He will answer your prayers. But you got to let it be heard. I can't tell somebody to get out by not saying nothing at all. I don't want evil in my life, but it's all around it. 
That's okay. It's going to be all around it. Just don't let it in. Just don't let it in. Verse Peter 5 and 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion. Walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. What happens when you see a dog come up in your yard? You just stare at it. You go, get! Get! Get on out of here! Throw rocks at it! I'm going to do the same thing with Satan. Throw rocks! Get out of my life! Get! I don't want you here. I don't want you here. That's what I'm going to tell you. I can't go in here and call the Humane Society. Hey, uh, Satan's at my door. He's growling at me. No, I'm going to call on the Almighty. And I'm going to call on it right in his face. Lord God, I rebuke that devil in the name of Jesus. That's all you got to do. Rebuke the devil. The Bible says, and he will flee. He will flee. If he's standing there and I'm just sitting here, you know what he's going to do? He's going to smack me in the head. Say, God ain't hear your prayers, boy. But if I speak it, if I speak it, God hears and he'll answer. He will answer. We've got to be vocal. Verse 4. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land. I stretch forth my hand unto thee. He said, My soul thirsteth after thee. What did Jesus say? Water. Water. He's the living water. And if we take in his words, we pray for him, out of our belly shall flow what? Living waters. Living waters. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land. Hear me speedily, O Lord, my spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide, hide me. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake, for the righteous sake. Bring my soul out of trouble. And of thy mercy, cut off mine enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul. For I am thy servant. For I am thy servant. Can we pray that? Lord, I am thy servant. Lord, I am thy servant. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. Teach me to do thy will. Teach me, Lord, to do thy will. For thou art my God. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Quicken me, Lord. Give me life that I may live for you. Show me, Lord, what it is that you would have me to do. Help me, Lord, to humble myself before you. Help me, Lord, to fight these battles that are before me each and every day that I open my eyes. Help me, Lord, to come out on top. And I know I can't do it on my own, but it ain't but, but the blood of Jesus. And knowing that my God in heaven hears my cry. But we've got to be crying. We've got to be crying to Him. Because He hears. He hears. And He'll listen. And He will answer. Psalms 5 and 3 says, My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and I will look up. And I will look up. There's instructions there. We've even got instructions on how to pray. We're going to lift our hands up to the Lord, and we're going to look up to Him and say, Lord God, I'm giving you this day. Do with me what you will, Father, for good. 
Lord, guide my steps. Protect my family. Keep evil from my doors. Lord, and I pray that my enemies would fall before us so that we could help them in the name of Jesus. Psalms 54 and 2 says, Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ears to the words of my mouth. Speak it. Speak victory. Speak peace. Psalm 64 and 1 says, Hear my voice, voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from fear from the enemy. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. You can't walk around in fear. You're a child of God. You can't walk around with your tail between your legs if you're a child of God. God will preserve you. You ain't got to come out there with your fist in the air ready to whoop somebody. You just come out there with a smile. And when they come after you, all you got to do is say, hey, God loves you. If you don't repent, you're going to burn in hell. Because there is a heaven and there is a hell. And I'm here to tell you today that it's real. Psalms 86 and 6 says, Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. Give ear, O Lord. I pray that God would open our hearts and show us what it is that we need to change in our lives. The things that we truly need to pray for to get our lives right with Him. Because until we do, we'll never experience true peace in this world. Peace is coming. Peace is coming. But I want to serve my King. I want to serve Him to the best of my ability. I say the best of my ability. There ain't much ability in me. But I want Him to come through me and do the best of His ability. Let Him live through me. Show me what it is that I need to do. And magnify and glorify Himself through each and every one of us. All we got to do is pray. We need to learn how to pray. It's time that we start praying out loud. Let your voice be heard. What Paul say? He said, the voice, the word has went out into all the world. To all the world. You believe that what you say matters in the way things are going in this world? I do. For every idle word that we speak, we're going to give account for. If it didn't matter, what would he get? What would we even be giving an account for? Keep thy mouth, O Lord, and thy tongue. Help us, Father, to live righteous. For there's none righteous, no, not one, the Bible says, but our righteousness is in Christ. It's in Christ. He give us His words to live by. He give us directions on how to do it. He give us directions on how... He gave us His phone number right here. All we got to do is call Him. Call Him. You ever called anybody and just sit there and held the phone? Hello? Hello? Hello. When we ain't crying out to God, that's what's happening. That's what's happening. When, he, when we ain't in His Word, we're hanging up on Him. When we ask Him to do something and we don't seek out His Word, we ask God to move in our lives, but yet we ain't got time to move for Him, we hang up the phone on it. It's time we start getting it right. Start praying for your life. Start praying for your family. Start praying peace on your neighbors. Pray for mercy. Because the world is evil. The world is wicked. There's still souls out there that need to be saved. If it wasn't, we wouldn't be here. So start praying for each other. Pray to God that He'd show us the way that we need to walk and not be deceived anymore. We pray that God would re help us to stand in the face of evil and rebuke it in the name of Jesus. 
all the sickness, all the disease, the drugs, the alcoholism, everything that affects our lives. God, give us the strength to humble ourselves and to speak it out loud in our homes. In the name of Jesus, our supplications will be heard. Any questions?